Divine Truth Spirit Assistance Discussions Giving assistance to people who have lived on earth and who have now passed into the spirit world. The title of this spirit assistance discussion is Sebastian and Six Sphere Atheist Spirits Question Repentance During which Mary Channel Sebastian, who lived over 500 years ago in Europe and acts as a spokesperson for a group of Six Sphere Atheist Spirits, who wants Jesus to answer questions that arose from listening to Jesus and Mary's discussions and comments about repentance and forgiveness. The session was recorded on the 18th of April 2018 from 10.30 a.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. G'day everyone, how are you today? Um, yesterday, myself and Mary were doing God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance, session 14. And right near the end of the session, we noticed there were a lot of spirits around us who wanted to ask questions about forgiveness and repentance. So we thought that we'd give them the opportunity of doing that today. Um, so we're not sure how this is going to proceed because there's a number of different groups and we obviously would like to answer each group's questions good enough, but it just depends on how long that takes and how tired Mary gets and, <laughs> and everything. So what we'll do is probably proceed with the first group uh, first, and then um, we'll see how that goes. And then it may actually just revert to the second, the other groups, just asking individual questions uh, rather than having them introduced uh, directly. Yeah. So we'll see how we go with this. Uh, we'll see um, what happens with regard to the, to the channeling. But, mm -hmm. but basically the subject of the material is a discussion really about our yesterday's discussion about forgiveness and repentance and involving God in the process of forgiveness and repentance. So. so specifically the questions came up from all the spirits when we got to the end of the last session of session 14, where we spoke about um, uh, repentance specifically and whether it was possible to repent without involving God in the process. Yeah. And there was a lot of different groups of spirits uproar, yeah, had that. a lot of different feelings about that so <laughs> yeah, yeah. um so we're just today going to be speaking with the ones who had some difficulties with it obviously there were spirits who were mm. totally fine and happy yeah. with that <laughs> but um three different groups specifically kind yeah. of um, made themselves known to me so we'll start with the first group and the other two groups i've been able to write down some of their questions so we might just um I might just put those questions to you and we discuss them as we do in a regular session. Sure. Um, depending on how I go. Yeah. No worries. So we'll just pause for a while while Mary gets <laughs> herself sorted. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you for making time to speak with us. It's our pleasure. Mm -hmm. mm. My name is Sebastian and I represent a large group here. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were drawn to your discussion yesterday and we have been able to investigate a lot of what it is that you're teaching. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, one particular question mm -hmm. that we would like to discuss with you at length. Sure. So Sebastian, maybe if I can just grab a little, a few background details from you, if that's okay with yes. you. Um, so um, what, what originally drew you to our discussions? Well, we, we are interested in ideas and facts, and um, uh, I'm not really sure what drew us to the discussion you were having yesterday. Yeah. Um, Is that the first time you were drawn to one of our discussions? Yes. Yes. And how long have you been in the spirit world? For myself, five, over 500 years. Yes. And what about the rest of your group? Is it a mixture of time yes, periods? Yes, it varies greatly. Yeah. Some a thousand, fifteen hundred years. Mm -hmm. um, the earliest that one of our, or the the youngest in spirit, <laughs> if you like to yeah, call it that, yeah, yeah. Uh, is uh, only a hundred years yes, since yeah. they passed. Mm -hmm. And are you all in the sixth sphere of the spirit world? Yes, mm -hmm. I can confirm that. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Is there anything else you would like to know? And have you, do you often frequent the earth uh, to be drawn to discussions or is that something that's quite uh, unusual for you? Yes, it was quite unusual. Mm -hmm. mm. We don't find much interest us on the earth mm -hmm. any longer, uh, but for some reason we were just felt uh, compelled to come and hear what you were discussing. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, none of us here believe in a God, as you were describing. Yes. Um, and, uh, but we we s stayed and listened nonetheless. Mm -hmm. But it was towards the end of your discussion that we had some particular questions. Sure, sure. So, so the specific question, are you okay for me to yes, proceed? Yes, yeah, no, that's fine. Uh, the specific question is about this concept that you present, that um, God is a God, the God that you speak of mm -hmm. enables the free will mm -hmm. of of each person. Mm -hmm. um, so if God is a creator of people, God creates them to be able to make their own choices. Mm -hmm. Now, this technically, this seems fine to us mm -hmm. as a print as, as a, a, as a concept yep. um and that each person we are well aware that each of us is able to make our own choices uh, our own decisions and each of those has a corresponding effect mm -hmm. uh, and each of us have developed a very good understanding of those effects mm -hmm. and also take responsibility for the choices mm -hmm. that we make mm -hmm. Uh, we are well aware that this is part of our development and a very essential part of the development of any uh, human um, in spirit or on the earth is to develop this self-knowledge and self-awareness mm. and to take responsibility for actions and decisions mm. and choices. Mm. Um, however, uh, we have had a lot of success in uh, dealing with our lives and dealing with the consequences of our actions and making better choices and actions. Mm -hmm. And we do experience a lot of happiness here where we are. Mm. Um, we feel extremely content. pleased, content, mm -hmm. happy, um, div diverted in that we, we enjoy our lives. Um, many fun things to do that are also very interesting. Interesting mm. and... Um, uh, yes, there's a lot to learn and consider and take interest in, and mm. we enjoy our life very much. Mm. So, really, it's a question of what we perceive to be logic mm -hmm. uh, about what you present. Mm -hmm. um, we would like to know that if you are teaching that there is a God who enables free will and gives this as an inherent gift to each being mm -hmm. at their creation mm -hmm. without an inherent penalty or duty associated with that mm -hmm. gift, why then do you say that there will always be pain in the individual until they uh, have a, 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 what you call a relationship with this creator? Mm -hmm. Why, no, it's a very why good, should there be a pain? It's a very good question. Well, firstly, let me probably clearly define pain as I was speaking about yesterday. As you, as you would know, there's sort of the pains. Most of you would have arrived in the first or second sphere of the spirit world when you first arrived. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Yes. And you would have noticed that um, to work through specific uh, issues that you had to work through, sometimes there, were pain, there was pain associated with that. Yes, certainly. Yeah, so, so you could call that the pain of dealing with what you now know to be an incorrect way of viewing ethics or morality. Yes. Yes. So, so where you did something that was uh, immoral as defined by, so at this stage, something that you're um, unclear about, whether it's God or whether it's just the universal rules that you're living by, but you could see quite clearly that there are morals and if you lived by those certain guidelines you become happier and if you don't live by those guidelines you become unhappier yes it's mm. it's an evident um sort of fact or reality of life yes the way of the it's it's a each person has the capacity to come to understand the the latitude or the the, the uh, laws or the the bounds of the environment that they exist in mm. and the workings of that environment mm -hmm. and the workings of oneself also and mm. so in in doing that we can see that there are certain actions and certain uh, even emotions and certain issues that if a person uh, engages with them or uh, follows them or, or does them, 
then this leads to unhappiness, mm -hmm. whereas... And a darkening the of condition too, isn't yes. it? And limitations placed upon their location and circumstance. Yes. yes. And the converse is true. Mm, mm -hmm. That's right, yes. So, so you're at least aware that that... Uh, and that's what I've been calling like the law of compensation at work to a degree. You would call it other things, but there are uh, there's operations that occur upon the soul of the human that occur because of certain moral and ethical issues. So rather than them being sort of physical, more f than physical laws, they're, they're more laws that govern the emotional or, or conditional state of the soul. So you've learnt many of them because you've had to learn many of them in order to progress to the sixth sphere. So, yes. so that's quite clear. And, and we're certainly not opposed to understanding them as law, a, a law-based system that yes. we exist within. Yes. yes. And so, so from that perspective, you can see that there is this, you could say, moral or ethical laws that obviously exists um, that seem to impose themselves upon the human condition. And when we act out of harmony with those particular laws or principles, that, that there are is a darkening of the condition. And you would have probably also examined on Earth how the darkening of the condition sort of works as well. You could see that a person when they're first born can be in quite a bright condition, as bright almost as you guys yourselves are. Yes. And, and then very rapidly uh, through the absorption of certain conditions surrounding the parent's uh, condition and emotion and beliefs and so forth, you can see the, the slow uh, or, and, and oftentimes quite rapid degradation of the soul of the, of the spirit child uh, and the, the earth-based child who has a spirit body I'm referring to here. And, and you see the degradation of that. So you Certainly. could say that we're starting off in a condition when, when, when there's first, at the first point of conception, there is the condition of the perfect natural man. And that is the condition that you have now obtained. You're, you're, mm. now, you're now back at the condition of the perfect natural man. Of course, there are some major differences between the, the newly conceived child and you, and that is the newly conceived child knew nothing. That's... And you know everything there is to know about that condition. Yes, and we understand this as a necessary journey of self-awareness and self-actualization. Correct. Actually, that this, this process that we observe in the human, uh, in the, in the uh, earth existence, the... Mm -hmm. the um, the changes in condition, as you would call it. You use a lot of language that we don't use, so I'm attempting to simply... Uh, That's all right. Use, ...use your language. But yeah. um, this earth experience and then the, um, the change in condition and one's... There's a correlation between the understanding within the, the being themselves mm -hmm. of their own choices mm -hmm. and decisions mm -hmm. and... Uh, very often, there's a, um, a a growing a, well. It's a necessary part of our of each being's development is to understand and come to take responsibility for the will as your the yes the will as yeah, you would the call use, it. The use of of the will in harmony with obviously what seems to be established some kind of guideline or law that imposes itself upon the human soul and its condition. Yes, and we feel almost exultant that we have, we, we feel we have completed a very, very um, crucial journey and we can be proud, not in a um, superior way, but mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a way that we can be deeply uh, satisfied with ourselves and that we have learned the great lessons of the universe in that we each uh, began life in this physical form and made uh, and experienced pain and suffering and hardships all the while coming to uh, understand or begin while we were on earth very in very feeble ways to begin to understand mm. this the immense capacity of each being and, and their personal will and choices. Mm. And, and then, as I've mentioned, it has taken me some 500 years of, of refining and understanding and taking more responsibility for, for my will um, to reach this, this very, very beautiful place. Mm -hmm. And that is why really there's two aspects to our question. Mm -hmm. The first is that 
the whole premise of your your discussion that one would always be in pain without this relationship with a creator. Um, well, I still haven't defined pain. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, <laughs> okay. We've only we've only defined the first part of pain, haven't we? At this stage in our discussion, C certainly. The first part of pain is the pain that comes from, um, you know, going through things that you become aware of that you need to clear away, and obviously there's a process that you have to go through that's quite painful to clear those particular things away, but it's a good process as you qu correctly state, mm. because you end up in a beautiful condition yes. in the end. So that, that's one aspect. The other aspect of pain is the pain that you don't know that you actually are experiencing. Now, at any point in time, you will notice through your progress that, that there were times when you didn't really know what you were missing out on. And it was only by engaging a process that you came to know what you were missing out on. Hmm. Now, this pain is a, is a particular kind of pain. It's sort of like a, it's not like the physical, emotional pain that you, we normally experience, you know, that when we're going through injury based conditions and trying to correct them. But it is a kind of pain in the sense that there is a nagging or gnawing feeling that we're missing out on something or potentially missing out on something. And, the, and only if we could know what that was then we could possibly make some f further progress. Now, if you examine your own progress up to the sixth dimension, you can see that there's, a, there's been a lot of assistance along the way, hasn't there, from yes. people who have uh, also done the same procedure um, that you've learnt now to follow. And, and they, through their own experience, oftentimes they come to that procedure, but sometimes they've also had to be taught by others to come to that procedure. And so there's oftentimes somebody coming along and saying, are you aware that this is also available to you? And if you deal with this particular thing, this will become available to you. Mm. And once you become aware that something is available to you that you have not yet experienced, there is, a, there is this other type of pain, which is this sort of pain of what is it that I'm missing? What, what, you know, what mm. is it that I need to do? How, how do I go about this? And there's that sort of um, nagging feeling, you could, you could almost call it, um, of, of maybe there's more beyond where I am right now. Mm. Now, as you've also learnt from your own progression up to this stage, um, it seems that growth is a continual necessity for the human being, right? Well, until one masters the self. Until one gets to the condition of perfect natural love, Yes. Which I would call your, your condition, yes. your six fear condition, where you treat each other equally, uh, you no longer sin against each other or harm each other. Um, you have a full understanding of your will also, and yes. you, you use it with intention and, and responsibility. Re integrity, responsibility, yes. Correct. And in amongst that framework, of course, there's a lot of uh, beautiful things that can be accomplished. However, what if there is a seventh dimension? that requires a different way than you have already learnt to obtain it. It's, it is difficult for me to see that there could be any other way. This way has brought such fulfilment. Yes, I understand, but perhaps this other way will bring even more fulfilment. Yes. And the pain of knowing at some point in the future that that way was offered to as a possibility, but you chose to not take it, surely would be a pain that you would experience if you found out that it was a reality. So you're speaking about a pain, not that I currently have, but that I would have, um, where another possibility be made available. Correct, but there's also this other part to it as well, and that is, that when, when it comes to your current condition, you are the same in your condition as when a, child is, uh, when a child is conceived in terms of the same level of brightness. You're not in the same condition when it comes to your knowledge, your awareness, your individualization process. Mm. So all of that that you described to me, I would classify as the individualization process. You're becoming aware of yourself as an individual and how you prop 
yes. properly meant to live within the universe. Yes, I agree. Yeah. That's, that's so, how I would typify it also. Yeah, so, so I would term that individualization. Mm -hmm. And you've gone through an individualization process mm -hmm. to, become, to, the, to come to the point where you are now, which is the pinnacle of where you can be if you remain a human. And notice what I said, if you remain a human. Hmm. Now, what if there is the potential that you can go beyond the normal capacity of a human by receiving something external to yourself that allows for you to go beyond the normal capacity of a human? Yes, I, I think that's a very interesting. All right. So, so that is a possibility, and particularly if there is a God, that would become a definite possibility. Because if there is a God, you would naturally logically assume that that God must therefore understand the entire universe and also potentially be able to offer potentials beyond the hum for the human being that are beyond the natural human being's capability. Yes, in principle, I'm not opposed to any of this. However, uh, the issue of the pain is not resolved for me yet. Yes. Because your discussion yesterday seemed to indicate that a person such as myself is in some kind of pain and that that would be, would such, should such a creator exist that creator has inherently built me to have pain all the while building me to to complete this process of I individualization that you speak of mm -hmm. uh why then have an inbuilt pain in that process that does not seem like a loving god and so uh, to explain my reasoning no, I understand why your then reasoning. would i wish to engage with <laughs> such a god if there if was so, such so an unloving, unloving Premise. Uh, premise. Yes, I understand where you're coming from. There's no problem there. <laughs> the, 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 main, the main issue is this. It's how you define pain. Now, the pain of missing out on something to me is a definite pain, particularly if such a thing that you're missing out on, right, is, is something you could have engaged. So it's the pain of, and, and you've probably experienced this pain in the past, and that's the pain of regret. Mm. I, I think you're speaking of different things, though. So if we imagine a child in a playground, mm -hmm. in a fairground. Mm -hmm. I don't feel we're thinking, speaking of different things. I'm thinking that I still probably haven't explained myself enough for you to grasp okay. my meaning. Okay. And I understand where you're coming from. And I understand what you're sta stating to me. What I'm saying is the pain of regret can cause future pain. Yes, but so, I'm saying, are you speaking of the pain of uh, a, so it's not, a choice not taken? Because to me, I have, there are many choices that I have not taken that I do not experience pain from, Yes, uh, as but, opposed to the pain of regret, which is more to do with something that I should have liked, but I was prevented or I did not take the choice. So... Um, We're not say, I'm not I saying you should have do it, done anything here. I'm not saying that. N no, no. I, I, and I'm not saying that, I, like what, what you just said to me, I'm not saying really any of that. <laughs> what, I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is if you look at honestly at the pain you've experienced in the past, yes. some of the pain has been regret-based pain where yes. you were offered opportunity at one point in time you denied the, you didn't respond. Mm -hmm. And then you went on for many years later and then you were offered, this, offered the same opportunity again. And you realized at that point, the, the need to take it if you wanted to be happier. And then you had the regret of not taking it. In the first instance. In the first instance. Certainly, but there are no offers being made to me. So. No, there is. You're just not aware of them. Yes. Yeah, so how how must one have a regret for an offer which they are unaware is being made? Well, that's uh, what that I'm saying. You won't have a regret me. for an offer that you are not aware has been made. Then how does your discussion you, stating that I must be in pain have any validity? 
so you're saying actually what you said then is not the case? No, <laughs> you are not giving me enough time to explain. I apologize. Go ahead. And and you you obviously want to desperately hold on to your current viewpoint, which is fine, but but you're not giving me enough time to explain. No, I uh, I apologize. <laughs> I've felt that you had explained. Please no. continue. What what you are not considering is that there are there is pain associated with the fact as you well perhaps what we need to do is rewind the conversation so that you can understand um, some things of where I'm coming from with the discussion certainly because it seems to me um, to a degree we're talking at cross purposes and so we just need to. I, I do understand completely what, qu what the question you asked, mm -hmm. and I do understand the reason why you asked it. Okay. All right. The offer that you have not been willing to, to accept at this point in time has been made for the last 2,000 years. And at some point in your history, you have had contact with that offer but you have not taken it and you have not taken it because you thought the offer would not benefit you or that it was not true or it was not a real a logical thing that could be offered to you so i'm saying already over the past 2000 years all of you have been offered this offer and the offer is to receive god's love that's the offer that god has had on for, for all humans that's the offer, the potential that is available. Now, what I'm suggesting to you is that that offer has been offered for such a long period of time now, but for whatever reasons, as a group, you have not wanted to take that offer. And, and some, of that re some of those reasons are because you don't really believe in a God, in a, in a, God that, in a personal God that I'm speaking about. Now, Let's say over the course of the next 10,000 years, you decide to continue to not to reject the offer. But over the course of the 10,000 years, you realize that, that the offer was made many times in your life. Mm -hmm. How are you going to feel about that then? If you knew that that offer could have improved your happiness far beyond your current capacity to experience, and that was made clear to you somehow, what would you feel if you had realised that over that period of time you'd been made the offer many, many times, but for whatever reasons, and, and at this stage the main reason I feel is some, what I would classify to be continued emotional injuries that you have about the concept of God. And remember, every time there are injuries in a person, there is a some level of pain that must be there. It's just pain we're not aware of, right? pain that we're not yet experiencing. So there's a difference between pain that you're aware of and pain that you're not yet aware of but is still inside of you. Now you've had this experience many times in your progress up till now where you've had pain inside of you that you did not or was not aware of and then you became aware of it through process, usually through somebody assisting you and then you could feel the pain, then you released it going through a process, and then it was no longer with you. But before that process began, you could say you're in a state of denial of a certain kind of pain. And what I'm suggesting to you is that each person who denies the potential of a relationship with God is carrying around with them a certain type of pain that they are not aware of. Now, that was not created by God. God never created that condition. God made an offer of a gift and the person themselves, through whatever reasons they had, denied the offer. It's the person that created the pain that was within. So if you examine all of your history and the pain you've experienced in your history, you can see that there's, there's always been an underlying cause that, that is related to humans or yourself that caused your pain that you had to release. It was never related to God in the first place. It was always related, or the universe even, it was always related to people's choices. 
It always got down to that. Do you follow me? Well, I'm waiting for you yeah. to explain. So when, so when you're ready, I have a number of questions. No, that's right. So, so here we are. We've got, we've got this pain that we're unaware of that has been caused by something happening in our lives, right? That we either chose to not take an offer, that's the pain of regret, or we chose to do something that was unloving or uh, uh, immoral or unethical, and that's the pain that came from the law, you know, the pain that affects the soul that you have to release. Mm -hmm. Either way, there was pain. Some of it was pain of becoming aware and some of it was pain that was already there that you weren't aware of at the beginning. And then in the process of becoming aware of, you became aware of the pain that existed within. And what I'm suggesting is in the sixth fear condition, you can feel like you have no pain, but that doesn't mean that no pain exists. It only means that you're not aware of it. That's all it means. Now, God made it that way so that if you want to stay in that condition, in the six fear condition, and which you're completely able to do, you will remain unaware of it, right? So, so that you can stay in a state where you're not feeling pain. But that condition is only going to exist when the other gifts are not offered anymore. While the gifts are being offered, once you become aware that the gifts are being offered, you may have some pain that you regret of regret from taking those gifts in the past. So just because you feel you're in no pain right now, it doesn't mean that you're not. It just means that you're unaware of it. And that has always been the case in your progression, if you think about it. So yes, there's a number of things that you've pointed out now that make more sense. Mm -hmm. it, first, it seems you are speaking about um, the pain that one might experience uh, uh, through becoming aware of an opportunity that was rejected through some kind of false reasoning mm -hmm. in the past, becoming aware now in the current state, whenever that occurs, that that was that was a good choice that could have been taken. Mm. So that's the mm. first type of pain you're speaking of. But to me, that's not a pain that exists yet. It's a future pain when we realise that a past choice was uh, was in error. Mm -hmm. Um, then you're speaking, and I do understand now, I think, what you were speaking of, mm -hmm. uh, because it is very clear that as one progresses, one becomes more and more aware of, of pain that they were not aware of previously, mm. and they, ca they come to understand the implications of actions and choices and uh, will uh, in terms of... Um, how that pain was created and how it could be released. Mm. So, so I do understand that now a little mm. more clearly. So basically you are positing to us that we have pain within us that we are not currently aware of, just as was the case at various times, <laughs> many thousands of times prior in our progression to this point. So we're harboring pain within us is really what you're saying that we are unaware of. Yes, although some of you who have been, uh, you know, as long as 1500 years in your current condition might be becoming aware of it. So if I can give you some examples of what it feels like, mm -hmm. then that might help you see the awareness of it. Uh, in the six fear condition, you often engage a course of action that you enjoy and after a while, um, that course of action seems to complete in the sense of like you feel like you've accomplished your underlying goals of that particular course of action. And you decide to um, no longer sometimes do that particular thing and then start another venture, which you mm -hmm. usually then go ahead and complete. Mm -hmm. And then it feels like it's completed. And then you generally go and start another venture. Mm -hmm. And then that usually completes and so forth. And, and so in a lot of ways, what's happening is there's a shifting from side to side through different ventures, mm -hmm. through different areas of interest or areas of knowledge or expertise that you're developing. But every one of them has a limit to its capacity. And so it comes to a completion. And then you move on to the next. Yes. 
this feeling of limit, if one tunes into it emotionally, does not feel right. Mm. But, but we often accept it as being right because it seems to be the norm, the normal. Mm. So rather than uh, so rather than allowing ourselves to feel the feeling, hang on a sec, something seems to be wrong here that I keep engaging new activity to a point of what I feel is as far as I can take it. It still doesn't seem to be to complete fully, but it seems to be as far as I can take it. And there seems to be some level of dissatisfaction, I, I suppose you could call it, that arises from the course of action that doesn't feel satisfying anymore or as satisfying as it was when you first began. Mm -hmm. And then it f sort of dissipates, that desire dissipates and then we go on to another activity. And then the same cycle occurs with that activity, where it eventually dissipates in our interest and, and we lose interest in it and it goes on to another activity and so forth and so forth. Mm. Now, many of you would be already aware that that cycle has happened many times for you. Yes, for myself and many others. Yes. yes. But you haven't measured it as a pain. No, that's correct. But if you feel about it, if you allow yourself to feel about it, it does feel painful. There's, some, there's something wrong with it. Mm. It does feel like there's something wrong with it because it doesn't actually meet the criteria of the rest of the universe that you've learned about, which is an infinite, seemingly infinite universe that you've yet, discover many, yet to discover many things in it, but it seems that many things are not available to you to discover. And that in itself is another pain. Now, while you can come up with postulating theories, of resolution for those particular problems, none of you have resolved them to the point where you know those theories to be true, which also results in another pain. Mm. And if you're sensitive to these pains, you would realize that actually there are pains, but you've been ignoring them and calling them normal life. But since your happiness is much, much greater than your happiness that you had while you're on earth or while you're in the first, second, third, fourth and fifth spheres, you've considered it's just a normal fact of perfect life mm. instead of it being something wrong. Some, something might be more than that. Something more uh, higher might be able to, as an ideal, might be able to be achieved. Mm. Do you understand what I mean now? Yes, I do. So many of you would have known this feeling, felt it, but ignored it and not seen it as a pain that's telling you that something might be wrong. Hmm. Thank you. You've given us a lot to consider now. Now, what I'm suggesting is that the pinnacle of the perfect human life is the sixth dimension. But the problem with the life in the sixth dimension or the sixth sphere is that you do finish up going through this cycle. And the longer you're in this life, the longer the cycle is. So, so I have friends who were in that condition of the sixth dimension, as you are now, and many of them spent more than 100,000 years there going through cycles of interest, one cycle of interest after another cycle of interest after another cycle of interest. Mm. And, and after a while, there was always this looming feeling that eventually every interest would fade. And then there's also this underlying feeling that what if every new interest eventually fades? What happens when I run out of interests? <laughs> mm. There's also this feeling if you allow yourself to be sensitive to it, you see. All right? So while it's a happy life and you can experience many beautiful things and it's a beautiful environment, at the end of the day, there are these feelings that can be easily ignored because of the happy environment in comparison, particularly to the past. But they are still there. These feelings are still there. Mm. And these feelings do create some level of dissatisfaction. Things don't seem to be resolved completely. And you know from your past, there are times when you felt the resolution of something completely, a complete understanding of something. There's been times when you've had that, and it's a very fulfilling feeling. And, and then it, in the sixth fear, it seems to stop. It, it seems to, you seem to go from side to side, investigating all of these different things, instead of going to the next dimensional space, the seventh fear, and so forth. 
Now, I also put to you that someone can lead you to the gate of the seventh sphere. And that will actually demonstrate to you that there is a seventh sphere. And therefore, your current position is not the pinnacle of what is possible. It is only the pinnacle of the human condition without external influences. Mm -hmm. And so that that is something that would interest our group. Okay. Um, well, however, yep. <laughs> there's just a, one more question. Sure, sure. Uh, and that is, um, so we understand what you are outlining, and mm -hmm. certainly there are many among us who begin to relate, and in some way it does feel a familiar feeling in that. Um, we recognize this sense of becoming aware of something mm -hmm. that we weren't aware of in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, and we are familiar with that from our previous progression. Mm -hmm. It's surprising a little because we felt that we were in full uh, possession of our will, if, if, mm -hmm. if that makes sense, and, and in full awareness of ourselves as beings. And so this, this is a little um, disconcerting for some of us. Mm. Uh, however, mm -hmm. not at my question yet. Mm -hmm. Would you would you like to say something? Just as long as you understand, that's not my question. I understand. If you can wait for a little to ask a question, I can give some explanation about some things here too. You are at the pinnacle of the perfect human. Mm. The, and and what I'm suggesting to you though that if something can be received from God that takes you beyond the perfect human. That is a different sort of thing, isn't it, than what you've done up to this stage? Yes, but that is the that that is the essence of our question. Sure. Why would we? So now that we are becoming aware of this dissatisfaction and and perhaps coming to see, okay, this could be a kind of pain, mm -hmm. and yet you say we are at the pinnacle of our potential as created beings. That, that is self-realized. Yes. In other words, that f from your own action. Yes. Mm -hmm. So then you speak of a God who, who enables and loves the free will, mm -hmm. the loving use of mm -hmm. free will of mm -hmm. any creation and does not obligate any child, as you would put it, mm -hmm. to have a relationship mm -hmm. with that creator. Correct. However, if that was the case, why then... Do we, at the pinnacle of that creation without a relationship with God, still experience pain? This tends to indicate on the part of the creator that it is not an equal choice and that it is not a pain-free choice. And therefore, we cannot say that there is no ob obligation for each creation to have a relationship with the creator. Do you understand my reasoning? I understand it completely. I feel what you're perhaps not understanding about yourselves though at this stage is that there are emotions that are driving your question. <laughs> I'm not opposed to that, but I don't think that that should negate the question. Well, because no, no, it's a question of principle. I'm not suggesting it should. I'm going to answer the question. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I, I, what I'm trying to do here is demonstrate to you that the emotions driving the question are similar to the emotions that have caused you to take so long to get to the sixth dimension in the first place. Now, God created a system where you can arrive at the sixth dimension of the spirit world, the sixth sphere, in, as a perfect natural human. And if you remain completely unaware of God and the other potentials, you will be what I would classify to be relatively happy. Mm, relatively happy. Yes. That is not a complete happiness. A loving creator who enabled the free will choices would enable a, a complete happiness. No, he enabled what was available to you right from the beginning. That's all he's enabled in the human, which was an ability to be as you are. And as you've all see up until this discussion, you've always thought yourselves to be completely happy, have you not? Yes. So, so he, he hasn't stopped you from feeling that you're completely happy. It's just this but discussion. It's, but you're saying that it's not a true state of complete happiness. To me, it's not a question of my awareness. It's a question of the truth of the condition. 
if the condition contains pain, which we are aware through our experience through the spirit life, that there have been many times where we've had pain that we weren't aware of. That didn't negate the presence of the pain. It's just our awareness that was that was flawed. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying to you, if there is pain, and as we've told you, yes, okay, now there's some some feelings that perhaps there is discontent amongst us. Um, that means that that discontent was already within us. So, so that means you cannot say that that oh, one was happy if the pain was already within them. They just had a flawed awareness of themselves. No, I'm saying the pain that you are now aware of has only you've only become aware of it because of this discussion. Yes, but I'm <laughs> saying that means that there's a change in my awareness, not a change in the presence of pain. The presence of pain already existed. Well, I'm so when you when you compare this with your other with your other progression, the present you are right, the presence of pain was there. You became aware of it, then you realized you had to release it, then you released it and then you got into a new condition. By the, when you, by the time you hit the sixth dimension, which you've now, where you now are, that pain now all disappears for you. So there's none of that pain there anymore. But there is the pain of regret that's potential, based on potential. Now, but you, you keep wanting to blame God for that, but it's actually your decision that creates it. No, I'm not so blaming God. I'm, I'm, I'm questioning the process of creation and the the granting of see from what we've investigated about what you you are teaching mm -hmm. is that you are saying that god is not forcing any of the creations the creator is not forcing the creations to have a relationship with them yes, However, and, and you have not been forced to have one and, no, and no. neither are you being forced but now. Is not the presence of pain because you've spoken? We've we've investigated now. You've spoken about pain at being a motivator or a penalising factor, which we understand as a as a global kind of principle that we've encountered before. Mm -hmm. So, if then the pain is a motivator towards change, and and to to varying degrees, one is fairly much forced into change through the existence of that pain. One can use one's will in, in a more proactive way or in a fighting way. We understand this as well. But essentially, the working or the operation of the laws governing the existence mean that the creation of pain forces a change upon the individual. So if you're saying that this hypothetical creator created us with pain in this state, then that is not saying that that creator, that entity is not, f that's saying that they are forcing us into a relationship with them. I never said that he created you in this state. No, the potential for this state. You're saying that there is nowhere that I can exist in the universe where I may be completely pain free, except in a relationship with my creator. Now, to me, that is saying that then I, I must be in a relationship with my creator. Well, no, you, you can still do what you want to do. But the, <laughs> yes, but I cannot achieve happiness. I cannot achieve complete uh, and lasting happiness without it. So then how then can we say that the creator is not forcing me into a relationship? Do you understand what I mean? I know exactly what you mean. I like there's no, I have no confusion about what you mean. Why uh, can't you I, answer me plainly then? Because you're not hearing my answer at the moment. Okay. You're not hearing it at all. And what I'm suggesting is there's an emotional reason why you're not hearing it. And what do you purport that emotional reason to be? It's the same emotional reason why you don't want to have a relationship with God. And that is that you don't believe in one. And there's certain amounts of feelings inside of you that you're unaware of that come from your life on earth that you've not been willing to process and work your way through and as a result remain in denial of. And that pain, like uh, this pain, this pain that I'm su suggesting that you have is very, very different than you getting to the sixth fear condition 
even though you know there's a God and deciding to not have a relationship with God. I see. So you're saying there's a difference in state. So are you saying then that, and I'm not opposed to this idea that I may be harboring, as I've established with mm-hmm. you, mm-hmm. pain that I'm not aware of. Yes. So from what you've said, it sounds to me as if you're saying that I personally or people amongst my group may have pain within us mm-hmm. about God, the principle, the the entity, the, whatever perceptions we may have of God that may be interfering with us in this conversation, but also in our openness to having a relationship with the Creator. Yes. However, yes. are you saying that that's different from me establishing that there is a Creator and then saying I would not like to have a relationship with that yes. entity, then I could be in complete happiness? Yes, because you'll be happy with your decision. But does and, that not, and happy with the limits of your decision. Does that not contradict your discussion yesterday? <laughs> not really. It's like, like, how long are you going to be happy with this continual cycle that we just discussed is happening already? Well, but no, I'm asking about... I, I understand I need to do some investigation now, and I'm, I'm, I am aware that you would like to have someone come and take us and potentially explore this possibility of another sphere. And there are some among our group who are very eager to begin that process. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I am I would like to go and do my own investigation some more now. However, I, I do want to establish with you just the answer to that question. You've said plainly now that if I do go and I do discover these things and I do deal with whatever pain is within me, mm-hmm. uh, potentially, about the existence of the Creator, mm-hmm. um, if and, and I establish there is a Creator and I say, I would not, I, now that I'm fully informed and fully um, free of free, prior pain and misconception mm-hmm. about the existence of a Creator mm-hmm. um, and fear, Mm-hmm. Um, which we understand is the creator of most pain. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm free of those things and I decide no, thank you, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, then I will be pain free for for eternity. No, you can't guarantee that you would be pain free for eternity. You would be pain free in the moment you made the decision, certainly. But you don't know what's going to happen in the future that may cause you to have some regret about the decision, as you know. Mm-hmm. So, so mm-hmm. you can't guarantee that the six fear condition is going to remain pain free. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? Uh, yes, now, I see the principle. Now, it's still a decision that you're making, but but it is a decision that is not. So, you, your pain is not the result of God's decision; it's the result of yours, and therefore the regret of it. Uh, so, but it's not yeah. so. It's difficult, obviously, <laughs> because I don't have a conception of a creator. Right. So I don't perceive an entity making a single decision as vis-a-vis me. You know, I don't see see that happening. So when you say it's not a result of God's choice, I'm talking now about the idea or the principle of a creator creating a universe which I exist within, and the operations of myself and the laws pertaining to me and the limitation placed on me by my own design Mm -hmm. and by the operation of the law with regards to my happiness. Yes, but it feels to me that it's a little like what you're stating is forgetting your own progress because when you're in the, say, the second sphere of the spirit world, when somebody came along and told you that there was a pain you were unaware of, and, and you didn't then have a great big spit at them and say, well, you know, if, if whoever did this shouldn't have done this to me, you know, it's, it means that my creation has been, you know, done in such a way that it's unloving and like it's uncaring. You, you never saw it as a external problem. You just mm. saw it as a decision inside mm. of yourself to make a dis- different decision. And then you made a different decision and you made and you took a different action. Mm, I can see that I'm, I am perturbed. I can see now I am perturbed about this idea of the Creator. Yes, because it, it's like when the idea of the Creator was never expressed to you, mm. you were fine mm. with the idea that you had to deal with specific things that you weren't aware of. 
and then you then you progressed and then you became aware of them and then and then you rep, rep the benefit of mm. that particular awareness mm. and the changes that you'd made so you were fine with that then so what uh, you're not seeing that why aren't you fine <laughs> mm. why wouldn't you be fine with that at any point in your progress um why is this particular shift blaming the creator and its creation if such creator exists and its creation well it's it's <laughs> only since the since i gave any credence to the idea even that a creator may ex it, any legitimate you know mm -hmm. consideration towards yeah. it of course I've heard about it yeah. so I look I feel it's almost that I need to withdraw now because no, I, I've I, become aware that that no, this um, is very not important. reasoning um, about this entirely logically because correct I I am not you're, you're treating this transition as different to your other ones I, I, yes, and I, feel, I feel some offence in me towards this potential creator, <laughs> which yeah, it's, exactly. it's very, it's very disconcerting, yeah, discombobulating, <laughs> and, and I, okay. I almost feel that I need, it is more responsible at this point to withdraw and. Well, I, I feel it's more responsible. It's, it's okay, like in my mind, it's okay for you to have these feelings about the creator, if that such a creator exists. It's been easy to ignore these feelings by telling yourself that the Creator doesn't exist. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's sort of like, in a lot of ways, yeah, and, and you could see in your own progression in the past, you can see that there has been times when you told yourself the problem didn't exist, even when somebody else told you they, it did. Mm. And, and that was to your own detriment in mm. most cases. And then, and then down the track at some point in the time you realized, oh, <laughs> it does, you know, exist. Mm -hmm. And once you realized it does exist, you made an effort to correct it. And once you corrected it, things changed substantially. So, so you can see in the past that this kind of cycle has also been engaged on many other issues, just not as deep an issue as this one, obviously, because mm. you can retain some level of logic Oftentimes, although it was hard when I was in the first or second sphere mm. to retain the logic even then, right? I feel logic is something that I've developed over many years. <laughs> yeah. And and this is why I feel disconcerted now, because I, I've i suddenly become aware that I, I'm you, finding it difficult to logically reason with you. Yes, you've broken your own standard of logic that you've mm. developed. And I understand that. I, I think you should have some compassion for that, given the fact that this issue with regard to God has obviously been there for a while and no one's ever discussed it with you and therefore confronted it. Do you, do you see what I'm saying? Mm. So it's just like when you're back in the third, third, first sphere or second sphere, people discussed an issue about your own, you know, demeanor or your own appearance and so forth. And sometimes you got uh, upset about it. And, and I understand because, it, it, you know, it's something that you weren't aware of and had to become aware of. So to my mind, it, it, the key is to not judge that. The key is to just say, well, obviously it's there and and at least I now know it's there. Do you see what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah. And I feel and I feel also um, none of you because I, I feel all of you, all of you in the group will feel this like um, so. So none of you should have any judgment towards another feeling it because all of you will feel it at some point, I feel so. Mm. And, and the key is. And, and my belief is every single person in the sixth dimension who has this kind of a conversation would feel it. Every single one, even those who believe in God would feel it. Yeah, so. And that is something that I need to invest in, in just to consider logically as well. But mm -hmm. um, it's going to require some work on my part. Yeah, and, and every prog ev all progression, as you know, does require work on our part. It's, mm. a, it's an exercise of desire, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, and, and you have learned to exercise your desire quite, you know, uh, well, obviously, to get to the condition of the sixth dimension, you've had to have a very um, strong exercise of desire um, to get there. So, um, so I, I don't feel that it is a problem either. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just a desire that you've not, you've not had a desire prior to now to investigate the issue. Mm. And, and the fact that a sincere desire hasn't been present to investigate the issue, when a sincere desire to invest, investigate other issues has been there, 
would tend to indicate that there is some kind of limiting factor on this particular issue that you're carrying mm. that has influenced the lack of true, uh, what I would call logical and scientific analysis of the problem. Yes, and I think to be fair also that um, it was only in being drawn to your discussion mm -hmm. that um, we began to discuss amongst ourselves certain factors mm. and um, yes, I, I feel many of us are becoming aware of how um, in some ways we've responded or reacted to what we heard um, through the perception that many of us have been harbouring about a creator not being personally interested in the personal happiness of each creation. Each creation. Mm. And mm. so this is, mm. as I said, there's much now to ponder because... Mm. Um, can I also say that I know that it's, well, I, I doubt whether there's ever, you've ever had a conversation with anyone who's on earth that has challenged you before in your current condition. No. <laughs> so that is also obviously contributing to this, to this problem for mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. and, and I must say to you that, I, that, that I, I have done progress through other spheres higher than yourself. So you, you don't need to be like I've had to learn these things, <laughs> mm. you know what I mean? It's not, um, it's not, I don't have a sense, my sense of logic is not because I have the normal sense of logic on earth. It, it's the, the sense of the logic that exists because I've had to go through specific process to gain this sense of logic. Does that make sense? Uh, yes, it does. And thank you for saying that. However, it is very hard for me to assess whether in fact you are being logical because I've now seen the error in my own logic. Mm. Hmm. Do you understand what I mean? Yes, As, I, I do. Yeah. I understand that completely. Um, I think the best way to proceed, though, is probably um, to introduce you to the gate between the sixth and the seventh sphere so that you can at least see that there must be a seventh. And, and that would then, we can have a bit of a discussion about that. And then that would at least then give you some reassurance that there is a seventh sphere and then that there must be a way to get there. Yes. Does it sound? That's fine. Fine with you. It doesn't. <laughs> doesn't. There is still the work, the inner work to do. Of course, and that's always going to be needing to be done. Um, yes, and, having... and while I'm not, <laughs> while I'm not opposed to to this plan, and yes, let's proceed. However, <laughs> I am very aware that I must deal with these new things that have now been exposed to me. No, before I do any acting. Um. Yes, I, I don't know if I agree with that statement because, because there, there's one thing that will help you act and that is what I would classify as faith. Now, it's not the kind of faith that you've heard from, from religious people in the sixth dimension. This is the kind of faith where that is, reassur is a reassurance of truth because you've seen the truth of it. And the beauty of being able to take you to the gate of the seventh sphere is that, is that it will help you be reassured that there is a truth that there must be a seventh sphere. Oh yes, no, I don't mean that. I mean, yes, of course, that that is fine to mm -hmm. take that action. I mean that one cannot enter some kind of hypothetical relationship with a hypothetical creator before they <laughs> deal with the the, <laughs> the anger they feel discombobulation about <laughs> internally about yeah. such an issue. Yeah. But yes, I'm very happy to go there. Yeah, no, that's good. Um, can I suggest to you that let's call the emotion you feel what it really is? Mm, you wish to call it anger. Well, what, it, it does feel call... that way, doesn't it? <sighs> so, so you're afraid of saying, and fear is another emotion that you're not used to feeling, I, I know, but, but you're afraid of saying that it's anger because anger normally puts a person back into the first fear or something mm. like that. But no, this is not, this is not the case. You see, this if it is anger that exists within, it's always been there. And you've still risen to the sixth dimension. 
even though it's there. Mm. And this shows you that God's not holding your anger towards God against you. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm. Uh, if God exa does exist, obviously the anger isn't being held against you that you feel towards that God. Mm. It's okay to call it what it is. So my suggestion is let yourself call it what it is, frustration, anger, um, you know, a what? sense of uh, abandonment, yes. confusion, rejection, rejection. many of these issues. Yes, yes, that's right. So so let yourself feel what it is. You're not going to revert back in your condition by feeling these particular feelings. Do you understand? Yes, You can you. only improve your condition by feeling the feelings is what I'm suggesting. Mm. If you think back to your past, you remember every time you felt a feeling, you've always improved your condition. So, so you've just got to remember that that's still the case here. Uh, every time you feel a feeling, you're going to improve the condition. The, the third thing I must say before I take you for our experiment is that many of you may need to, that there's, there's things that you've missed out in your learning if God exists. There's things you've missed out in your learning that began in the third sphere that you may need to revisit. Mm -hmm. Again, don't assume that that means that you can't go back to the sixth sphere whenever you want, because you can. But, okay. but the third sphere is conducive to learning specific things about God. And the fifth sphere in, in, in itself is also conducive to learning other things about God and other things about the human soul and how it's created that you've not yet learnt. And those particular things were ignored at the time because it seemed wrong to you at the time. Mm -hmm. Once you investigate things further, it may now feel right for you to go back there and go, right, let's have a look at this thing that I missed out on. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of those things is the, the way the soul grows emotionally as well as intellectually. That is certainly one thing that all people in the sixth sphere have missed out on, anyone who's staying there, you know, for a period of time. And so it's just important to realise that there may also be things in the past uh, you, where, where, that you've skipped over because you did not want to look at that particular thing because it also had a specific challenge to you internally that you wish to ignore. Mm. So, so logically you can see that this may apply not only to the issue of God, but it also may apply to the issue of the consistency or the way that your human soul has been created. In other words, discoveries about yourself mm. that you didn't have before. Mm. So, so allow those particular things to happen is, is what I recommend. Okay. Now, also, I can bring to you some people who have gone through those things so they can actually help you well, go through them if you wish. I, <laughs> I would anticipate they would come. If that turns out to be the case, that has always been my experience until yes. this point. So yes. As soon as you had a longing for something to happen, people, people materialised that came to uh, who help could, you. Who had experienced similar things and could assist me. Exactly. Yes. But if you uh, asked for them to come, it, they would come quicker. Yes, <laughs> cer suggesting. certainly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm suggesting I, to all I, of your group that thank you do that. <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah. Okay. So what I've done now is I've asked a, a couple of people to come. And would you like to say who they are? They'll introduce themselves to you. Paul. Mm -hmm. Paul and Nicodemus. <laughs> okay, now, if uh, the first thing I'd like to show you is their power, if that's okay with you. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask them to demonstrate some of their power, not, not all of it. Mm. So you can see that they are spirits normally brighter than a six sphere condition. Mm. So that in itself is strange, if you think about it logically. How can a, how can a spirit uh, display a brighter condition than every other spirit in the sixth sphere while they're in the sixth sphere? Yes, look at this point, <laughs> I don't feel that, <laughs> there's very many things that I feel are becoming <laughs> inherently obvious that you need not explain. That's, yes. a, that's all right, yes. that's all right. So, so let's, uh, let's ask them to take you to the gate. Oh, mm -hmm. between the sixth and the seventh sphere. Mm. 
this is quite emotional for a number of us. Yes. Now, what I'd like them to do is for them to traverse the gate in front of you. Mm, which they have done. And then I'm going to ask them to come back. Yes. So you can see that there is obviously some kind of gate uh, that can be traversed there. Now, if they can lead you up to the gate, how do you feel? Look, it is very emotional for all of us right now. Yes. Yeah. Now, emotions are a part of getting beyond this gate. Mm. And this is the thing I wanted to show to you, that there's this emotional part of the human soul that needs to be developed in order to allow the, the traversing between the sixth and the seventh dimension. I'm finding it difficult to speak with you now. Yep. Okay. Well, Sebastian, I feel, um, and let, if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. If you can come back a bit from the gate now, you'll notice as you come back from the gate, you feel more yourself. Yes. Yep. Yes. And then as you proceed towards the gate, it feels more like overwhelming. Very overwhelming, and it's difficult f for me to remain engaged in such a public display while I feel so intensely emotional. Yes, I understand. The gate has quite a draw for me, though, mm -hmm. and I do feel that I, I wish to um, explore what is happening now. Mm -hmm. No worries. Well, and uh, um, please, like all, everyone here is used to emotion, <laughs> as you know from my own experience, I'm used to a lot of emotion. So emotions do not worry me at all and I, and I certainly don't look down upon them and I know that many people in the sixth sphere do mm. to a degree look down upon emotion mm. and this is one of the problems of the condition mm. is that it does sort of it's a bit condescending towards emotion right and 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 once you sort of get close to and this, this is the reason why it, many of you haven't discovered this gate before now because of the internal feeling about emotion, any proximity to the gate would have triggered the emotion that you've been trying to avoid. So it's important to see that emotion is a good thing here. There's obviously something about this transition that is emotional, and that should tell us something about what we've missed out in developing. Mm. That makes sense. That, so that helps us a lot to discover what it is that we need to find out about ourselves that will help trans, you know, help us go through this transition. And the, re the reason why I've raised that with you is because it is quite confronting for any six fear spirit to approach, who has been there for some period of time, to approach these gates. And there are many of such gates in the sixth dimension, obviously, between the sixth and the seventh. But but as you approach, it, it's, it's difficult to uh, feel like you want to be there because there's so many overwhelming emotions. Yes, and mm -hmm. we will be asking for the assistance that you yeah. mentioned. Yes, yeah. because the, the reason why I suggest the assistance is they will show you about how to deal with these emotions. Mm, that's, is, well, that is exactly what we would like help yeah, with. Yeah, and, th and this is the important thing to address, actually. Um, and, that, and that will help you greatly to make this transition. Now, there's many people that I've met in the past who have made this transition between the sixth and the seventh dimension in a very short period of human time. So it's not, it doesn't have to take long. It just, it just is a process that you need to go through. No, I feel I will cross it soon. I, yeah. I just, mm. uh, yes. Yeah. So, um, but it's been uh, very good having a talk with you, Sebastian and your group. And, and I'm so glad you came to have a discussion. Thank you. And yep. there's many here who wish to express their immense gratitude, in fact. Yep. So it's our pleasure. If you have any more questions, I'll be happy to answer them. Mm. But to be frank, probably Paul and Nicodemus would answer them much more quickly to your satisfaction than I can at this point. Okay. <laughs> Thank you again. I feel quite bereft. Yep. And yeah. even to now part our company, I feel 
<laughs> sadly strange strangely sad yeah. but um yeah. i thank you very you, much you'll understand why as you go through these particular things mm. it's been a pleasure talking to you though and answering those questions thank you mm. I'll do good. Mm. 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 Felt like it. Felt like they changed a lot. Yeah. During the time of the talk. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. It was quite nice, wasn't it? It was moving, mm. yeah. I don't know. <laughs> it was, yeah. It's just, it's just nice to feel their feelings a bit better when, say, approach the gate. Mm. Yeah, I could feel them. Suddenly, it just was very intense for them. Mm. Yeah, because yeah, you know, it's not feeling emotion there is not like time, is it? It's like yeah, yeah. Here, you've got to have time to cry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's sort of like you, just, you, just sort of you can go through all the emotion in a short space of our time, but because yeah. there's no real time there. No. Yeah. 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 And it's like changes are happening while you're even talking to them. Yeah, which is also quite disconcerting for them too, because yeah. it's sort of like, particularly when they've been there, for the ones that have been there for 1,500 years or longer, it's... Yeah. Paul must make, help a lot of people across that transition, I reckon. Yeah, pretty sure he's had to do it, he had to do it first. But he's also, pretty intellectual when he was on yeah. Earth. <laughs> But also, even wasn't he a doubter in the existence of God on Earth? Uh, yeah, he, he really, yeah, he had trouble accepting the existence of God on Earth. Yeah. He, he, it was only his experience with me that caused him, but he, even after a while, sort of couldn't remember that experience very well either. So, yeah. So with Paul, he was, couldn't remember the experience with me, you know, with, with the temporary blindness that he experienced. Yeah. He knew it happened, yeah. But it sort of after a while, he sort of wondered what caused it, and mm, you know that sort of doubt wasn't a doubt. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's funny, isn't it, how people who doubt often write a lot because <laughs> <laughs> he wrote a lot. <laughs> Sometimes it's a way of trying to work out your doubt. It is, yeah, mm. yeah, and sort of exorcise your doubt by trying to encourage others to exercise their, <laughs> to get rid of theirs. You know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> One okay. thing that the, the spirits didn't mention were their soulmates, and uh, that would have been an mm. interesting discussion. There was mostly, they were a group of men that were kept, that were still quiet together. Yes. And were. there were some women in the group, but there wasn't many. Mm. No, it's predominantly male. Mm. I, I felt all. I felt strong I feel all, all of them. Of they all seem male. They, all the questioners today. I suspect all of their soulmates were in a higher sphere. Yeah, and that's probably why he especially felt very drawn. Hey? Mm. Yeah, mm. it's interesting. Be interesting to have that conversation with them mm. if once they make the transition. Yeah, mm. well, I feel that'll happen soon. We might be able to talk to them again next week or something, mm. or the week after. I mean, mm. yeah, mm. yeah. Okay. Mm. Yeah, old Sebastian, eh? I think he was French or some European, Portuguese or something from there. Yeah. Yeah. When he was on Earth. Pretty convinced that I didn't understand his question. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, well, he just, he, he kept sort of, we didn't give you a chance to answer. Not probably, no. Um, but he eventually, he eventually was like, no, I've just got to listen. Yeah. Um, but he was quite taken aback because he suddenly realised, oh, hang on. Now I can't even tell if he's logical because I can see I haven't been logical. So I just, that's why he just wanted to go at that point. Like, I've just got to mm. figure this out. But mm. it's really good that they went to the gate because... Mm. Um, yeah, that... Well, that's nice for me even just to Well, it was always going to have a more powerful effect on them than the discussion was, you know. Yeah. And that's the thing is... You know, sometimes the discussion is just about allaying fears enough yeah. for some action to be taken sometimes. Yes. That's the cool thing about the spirit world is, mm. isn't it? They can actually take them to locations or bring Only people to them. if they to want them. to go. Like, yeah, yeah. But, but, you know, there's physical kind of things you can do right then and there. As long as there's a small opening, 
you can do so much. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But also can be precluded from doing it for such a long time. 